necessary and vote for him, even more so after Saturday. He doesn't need to preach to the mob. He needs to convert. Hi oh guys, welcome back to Dead Fire. He can fix what's broken in this country. That's what I think he's going to do tonight. That's what I think the opportunity is. That's what Jamie Vance represented yesterday in what I thought was such a fabulous speech. He's going after the Big Ten. On our way into a dungeon right about now, as far as I know. Hulk Hogan, Dana White. Kaylee talked about how he can rise to the moment. I've been to a lot of big sporting events. This has the feel of a big game right before a kickoff in a arena, right before a game seven. There's an electricity in the building, and I think Trump is going to meet that. And I think he's going to propel Joe Biden out of this race and Trump into at least the biggest win. Everybody needs to go vote. Don't blame me. Go vote yourselves. That we've seen since 2008, a shattering of the Democrat identity politics coalition is coming, and this guy's going to do it. And J.D., as you said, his speech, very, very eloquent last night, his personal story. What does he call it? his grandmother? Is it Mama? 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 And... As a protector of him, as a fighter, she was a vicious fighter, and she did it because of love. So that's probably how you square the fight and the strength, because as a president, as a family man or a woman, you fight and you protect the people who you love. And that's probably going to be the thrust, I think, the president takes from J.D. into Thursday. I think that's exactly right. And look, he's not going to mention Joe Biden, but he referred to Joe Biden by another name in his 2020 RNC speech. The destroyer of the... <coughs> Will he vaguely reference him? <coughs> <coughs> Second. Because they knew ahead of time that they were unprepared. We 
Meanwhile, Director Kim Cheadle personally met with Trump at the RNC this week. And I'll be asking the president about that meeting when I interview him this weekend. And a group of Republican senators caught up with Cheadle here at the convention. Cheadle did not conduct herself professionally, but right now we're going to go to a real hotline. Trump attorney is speaking out. Let's listen. Trump built a legacy of putting America first. And as the 
President, as a father, as a boss, as a friend, even getting a little emotional there, tearing up. As we were saying, the Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle was here at the RNC yesterday, actually met with Trump, and then was confronted by a group of Republican senators. Watch this. to go to his own 
private security and local law enforcement. So there is all kinds of issues here. And we're going to get to the bottom of it starting on Monday. I'm just not so sure I believe everything that I'm being told about what's inside his phone yet. I just don't trust the people doing this investigation. Steve Scalise, what's next in this? This is a run out the clock situation. She's literally running away from senators. Yeah, it's disgraceful. I mean, she should be showing the transparency that the American people are calling for. We're calling for questions that need to be answered. But the American people want to know those questions as well. They want those answers and deserve them as well. We're looking not only at the standing committees that are going to be starting Monday having hearings, we're looking at setting up an independent commission. Let the president talk about whatever he's going to do. We don't feel confident that they're going to be doing enough on their own. We're going to have our own investigation in the House with our own independent commission. We're putting that together right now. And it starts Monday with the Oversight Committee having their hearing on this. I will hold this commission outside of D.C. So you can get a grand jury to enforce the yeah, Florida, 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 something like that. So we can talk about this very much. All right, how do you do? All right, uh, we have the uh, other ones right now playing a video titled Reagan Better Off. As we hear some sound in the background, we also know that Trump likes music, according to Alina Hoppe. <laughs> Let's listen in to this video. that you have. President Trump, he'll make America great again. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome journalist, author, and American citizen, Tucker Carlson. just a political party's nominee. 
a former president or a future president. A dim, this was the leader of a nation. <laughs> But if you think about it, the presidency comes with great power, obviously. But if you think about it, that is a title that is bestowed by a process of some sort that can be subverted. And in the end, it does not confer by itself, as no title does, legitimacy. Just because you call yourself the president doesn't mean that much inherently. I can call my dog the CEO of Hewlett Packard. It doesn't mean she is. It's true. And you hate to say it, but it is also true. It's a fact that you could take, I don't know, a manic and a dead person and make it present. If you, no, you could. You could. I'm just saying theoretically possible. With enough, with enough cheating, that could happen. But being a leader is very different. It's not a title. It's organic. You can't name someone a leader. A leader is the bravest man. That's who the leader is. That is true in all human organizations. This is a law of nature. In that moment, Donald Trump, months before the presidential election, became the leader of this nation. That was the most obvious to me. And I have to say, you know, I... I I think it changed I, I reached out to Trump within hours of that night, and when he said to me that night, I just in shot in the face, he said not a single word about himself. He said only how amazed he was and how proud he was of the crowd, which didn't run. And I thought two things. The first thing I thought was, well, of course they didn't run. His courage gave them heart. A leader's courage gives courage to his people. And the second thing I thought was, this is the selfish guy I've been hearing about for nine years, really not a word about himself, about his people, period. And the second thing I noticed, which I don't think anyone has remarked upon in Hollywood, is going through since about the script, but why not? Is that... He turned down the most obvious opportunity in politics to inflame the nation after being shot. To inflame the nation, which is an opportunity that almost every other politician I've ever met, and certainly his opponents, would have taken instantly. And they would have said, well, what is this? How did he get shot? Like, how did this happen? And those are real questions that we have to get to the bottom of. But in the moments, the days, the week after the shooting, he did not say that. He did his best to bring the country together, and I thought, this is the divisive figure, this is the irresponsible person. No. This is the most responsible, unifying behavior of a leader I think I've ever seen. So the question is, where is he leading us? And I could go on for hours, but I, let me just sum it up. I do think the entire point from the famous escalator ride nine years ago until today of Donald Trump's public life has been to remind us of one fact, which is a leader's duty is to his people, to his country, and to no other. That's the point. That's the only point. And another word for this is democracy. Democracy, in case you're a little sick of being beaten in the face with democracy on television, actual democracy is the proposition that the citizens of a country own that country. They're not renters, they're not serfs, they're not slaves, they're the owners of the country. And for that to be true, their leaders have to represent them, which is a way of saying they have to do what the people want them to do. Or a close approximation thereof. But if they completely ignore what people want, not just one year, but generationally, say for 50 years, then it may be, I don't know what, it's not a democracy. And so I think the entire Trump project, paradoxically, is attacked as an enemy of democracy, is to return democracy to the United States. Hey, let's pay attention to what people actually want. And the lack of interest in that question in Washington is something that ultimately drove me out of the city after 35 years. Lawmakers stepping over the prostrate bodies of their fellow citizens ODing on drugs to go cast votes to send money to some foreign country. 
Yeah, actually, we've lost more Americans from drugs in the past four years than we lost in World War II. Yeah, our bloodiest war. More than we lost in World War II. Does anybody care? It is with that. It is with that. And do you hear a single word from Washington about doing anything else? We know where the drugs are coming from. We know the supply groups. The U.S. military spent billions bombing the Ho Chi Minh Trail. You don't see our commander in chief suggesting that we use our military to protect our country or the lives of its citizens. No. That's for Ukraine. And it's too much, actually. It's too insulting. It's too insulting. It's a middle finger in the face of every American. It's a very clear statement, which is unmistakable. And that is we don't care about you. And Donald Trump, whatever you say about him, and I think he's a wonderful person, I know him well. By the way, the, the funniest person I've ever met in my life, actually. You can't be funny with that perspective or with that empathy, which is true. But everything else about Trump aside, he actually cares. Because he's interested in the people who lives here, live here, because that's his job. A father's job, his duty is to his family. An officer's duty is to his men, a president's duty is to his citizens. And he seems to be the only one who thinks that. And in his choice for vice president, J.D. Vance, he's made that really clear. J.D. Vance, I'll say this about him, is a thoroughly decent man, and I'll just admit it, a friend of mine, one of the very few politicians in Washington who actually is very close to his own wife, which is wonderful to see. And, and she's wonderful, actually. But J.D. Vance has views that are closer to Trump's voters than anyone else in Washington in office. Therefore, he's the vice president that's called democracy. So I will stop at just one point, and that is what's happened over the past month since the debate, and particularly on Saturday in Butler, I think a lot of people are wondering, what is this? This doesn't look like politics. Something bigger is going on here. I think even people who don't believe in God are beginning to think, well, maybe there's something to this. Actually, and I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think it's going to be okay, actually. I do think that. In the day after the midterm elections in 2018, Antifa came to my house. The Democratic Party's militia, okay? I was at work. It was obvious when I was at work because it was public. My wife was home alone. They tried to come in through the front door. They terrorized her. She hid in her pantry. It was on television. It was horrible, actually. It was, I mean, I'm not whining about it. I wasn't getting shot in the face, but it wrecked our day. And the next morning, we're lying in bed, and the phone is Donald Trump. It's not like a regular text buddy of Donald Trump's. She picks it up, hello? Susie, Donald Trump. And it's coming through, I can hear it. Actually, we'll catch you guys.